The April 4th caught report from the CFTC, I looked at gold and I saw the bullion banks put in 24,000, I think it's 24,596, I remember, numbers could be wrong, but it's tw almost 25,000 short contracts on gold at one time. That was 10% of the entire, of their entire short position on gold they did in one week and they've maintained it. They're now short 200, over 274,000 contracts and they kind of rolled out of a little bit of them uh, uh, last week. They deleverage out of shorts about 5500 contracts but they're still three to one almost short uh in gold so obviously they're betting short gold now given the issues in the economy it's obviously you know i don't think that gold's going to go down and if you look at the way the big banks trade it they trade it based on where they're positioned in the markets in other words the spot price of gold really doesn't have a lot to do with physical we've talked about this it has to do with speculative trading and the bullion banks right now are betting that gold is not going to stay up they're going to lose that bet if we continue to have bank failures because Bitcoin, the cryptos aren't uh, they're not serving as a safe haven. The stock market is very volatile and tumultuous, which I said would happen uh, at the beginning of this year. Once we get into this type of thing, big economic issues, you're going to see volatility and you're seeing people position in the metals markets. And I and I don't think, you know, those positions are beneficial. They do offer some ability to get in here. You know, gold under its all-time high. But eventually, you know, the bullion banks are going to have to unwind these positions. Gold's not going down long-term from here. There is no way. Um, I think the short positions were a vote of confidence. If you, if you think about J.P. Morgan, J.P. Morgan's one of these bullion banks. It just bought First Republic. So it's sort of a vote of confidence of prop up the banks, you know, maintain the gold. price. That's the strategy, right? That's falling apart because despite Elijah one-tenth of their entire short position being placed in one week. A massive bazooka blast of short paper, gold's still rising and it's still challenging 2000 all over again. You can't keep gold down with paper when people want it. And the paper trade's gonna start to break down here. Now they, they still have some effect on it because they're, the, the big bullion banks have the largest single positions and they're market makers. They can move it to certain targets and make money. So if it's going up or down, they're gonna make money. But when you get that big blast of gold, when people come in and they really want that gold, the bullion banks are gonna be on the wrong side. And I don't think the bullion banks are stupid. So while they're taking advantage of their position right now and also trying to help the government, I think the government asked, probably asked them, hey, keep the gold market down until we can figure out the banking system because the gold market is, that's, it's like the bat signal. When, when the gold market gets fired up, everybody comes for gold. Case in point, last week, and I cannot give details because we're still in play on this, but I had a serious group of investors backed by serious money looking for over 100 million in gold, and they wanted it in a combination of Dory and bars. And Dory is pre-final step of refining when it's not completely uh, pure, and there's a little bit of uptake on that because purifying and selling, you get a little bit of money and that's what they want, but they also want fresh gold. So this is the second point of why that was a big deal. And they haven't expressed this to me, but I happen to know this is one of the benefits from studying the market. When you get gold dory from a miner and you put it through a refinery, you have first claim on that gold. No one else can claim it. You have the original certificate of title, if you will. And as long as you maintain that and you maintain your, your chain of title and you can prove it, nobody else has a claim to that gold. And so if you're an investor and you're gonna bid up over $100 million on gold, are you gonna wanna gold, go to gold off the exchange that could be rehypothecated to 10 other people? You know, maybe that gold's been pledged a bunch of different places, we don't know. And so part of the request for that type of gold is to make sure you have the original claim and that there won't be any legalities around that. Because when the music stops, Elijah, there's not going to be enough gold and lawsuits are going to fly. And people are gonna put claims on gold that may not be theirs, so they may be frivolous, but real lawsuits in which two people believe they own the same bar, and oh darn, that bar got bit out on one market and bit out on another. Oh, shucky doodles, you know, that you're gonna be in that legal fight. And the time that you need gold to capitalize your business, you know, or to, to secure your financial position, if somebody else has a claim on it, guess what, it's tied up in court, you can't use it. And so we're seeing those big orders come in. I also had a group come to me and say, is there any way to get that arsenal mining? And they were thinking about starting like an ETF to get funds in to then support the artisanal miners. But I'm thinking artisanal mining is small mining done maybe thousands and tens of thousands of times over. And there's a market for that. Guess what? It's in Dubai. So why don't you just go to Dubai and buy it? But they're trying to get in front of that, 
that UAE market and get that gold. Why? What that tells me, when big people come in and they're trying to get it before that gold pops out as in its finished form on these exchanges, it means that these exchanges are not providing that big liquidity that we think or we thought that they have. Because if they did, why don't they just go buy it off the exchange? I've got an offer right now. Somebody wants to sell me 200,000 kilograms of silver, and they're offering 10% less in LME spot price. Fabulous. It's a great deal. You know, you can find those buy sometimes on the finished product, but that's the only one I've been able to find in size. I can't find it in gold, and that's the only silver one I've been able to find. So there isn't a lot out there in bulk that people are wanting to let go. And so what you're seeing is people positioning themselves early in the supply chain to get it. And I reached out to no less than 20 miners last week trying to see if I could fill that order. And they're like, uh-uh, we're going to the refiner because it preserves their profit. But the refiners have locked that in. Why do the refiners lock it in? Why does, you know, I talked with a CFO of, of a silver company that I've covered for many years down in Mexico. And he said, I've got three manufacturers that have a bid on our silver, Samsung and two others. Their silver's long gone. And Samsung is even porting it to the refinery themselves. The, sorry. The big corporates that need a lot of this gold and silver are front running and the hedge group fund that came in is just big money. It's independent, wealthy people. And now they're coming. So big money's coming in before that gold gets finding manufacturing. They're trying to take it off. That tells you there's not enough coming out of the exchanges. And I don't care what they say on the exchanges about their liquidity. We would not be having these big orders come through if they had it. I think it's a sign, Elijah, that liquidity on the big exchanges is a little tight right now. And big money's coming in, look at these bank failures going, we need to get into gold. They're not you know, buying all the Bitcoin, they're buying gold. And that really tells you what people want, how they want it, and why they want it. And these are clues as to how that this market is manifesting. That is interesting. I, I think it's a very key there that they're not looking to the exchanges at this point. We're also seeing a lot of central bank demand that we've talked about in the past. Um, I know UBS put out a report that they think central bank demand is going to continue to be high and gold is going to make new highs. Uh, your perspective on demand coming from central banks themselves. Yeah, the central banks in 2022, according to the World Gold Council of Metals Focus, which tracked this, bought more gold than they have in their history. 2022, the central banks bought more gold than they ever have in history. They've been buying it since the last crisis, about 2010, 2011, and last year they bought a bunch of Y. Well, you have the Basel requirements, which emphasize gold as a high quality liquid asset. You also see people looking at U US Treasury debt going, oh, wait a minute, that's not holding up so hot. Maybe that's not our main safe haven. Maybe we need to deleverage. So I think people are coming to the gold markets to get it. And as they're getting gold, they're selling some of these treasuries and things. But nobody's trying to set off the alarm. Nobody wants to dump a trillion dollars in US Treasuries and crash that market. They, first of all, they don't want to crash their own assets. And second, they don't want to let people know. And so they're deleveraging out of this stuff, which is why bond rates are rising. And you have gold prices rising because the demand is going up to where you can't hide it anymore. People are rotating out. And so, yeah, I think gold demand is going to be very high. I think bond demand is going to come down. And that's really what we're seeing in the economy. 